I mean, New York City is really the greatest city in the world for exploitative capitalists, or if you want to become an exploitative capitalist. I mean, if you if you want to become a sociopath with no feelings, there is a really fun island you can go to and practice not having feelings, you know? But hey, uh, you do get to see Lion King on Broadway sometimes, right? That's fun, huh? That's exciting. Uh, New York, New York, it's a hell of a town. It's hell. It is literally hell on earth is basically what New York City is. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, a few quick things before we jump into the new episode you're about to check out here. Uh, as you may notice, there are some uh, laughs that you hear in the backdrop, and that is because this episode was filmed in front of a live virtual audience over Zoom. Uh, these shows happen once a month, and if you want to be a part of of the live virtual audience, you can do so by grabbing tickets to one of the upcoming shows uh, right now. They happen on the last Friday of every single month, and it's a new show every time that involves some storytelling and, of course, the socially conscious comedy that you guys uh, are, are about to enjoy in, in just a few minutes. And sometimes there will be some special guests kicking the show off, so it's something that you guys don't want to miss. So if you want to grab tickets, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. And that's pretty much the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. So if you enjoy these videos and you want to check out more things that I have put out there, uh, you can check out my live stand-up comedy albums. You can check out uh, all of the past v episodes of this show, uh, my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and join us on the live streams uh, when I stream on Mondays through Wednesdays and Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So again, go check everything out at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, now onwards to the episode. And since homelessness is such a massive problem, it needs a pretty massive and bold solution. And some states are coming up with, with a solution. For example, New York City a city that some say is uh, the greatest city on the planet, has a program where they pay homeless people's rent for a year if they go to New Jersey. They actually get caught schlepping their homeless people across the river in New Jersey. New Jersey people apparently don't like that very much. The state of New York pays for a year of rent in another state as long as you don't come back. Apparently it's cheaper to just move them into New Jersey than it is to keep them within their own city limits. A year of rent for free. Can you imagine that? They also buy them one-way tickets to get the homeless people the hell out of their city. No questions asked. Just leave. <laughs> Look, I know now some of you guys are wondering, well, why not just pay for rent a, you know, for a year in New York City? But they don't really want poor people living in the greatest city on earth. <laughs> I mean, what do you think this is, Atlanta huh? or Chicago, you know, or, or, or Cleveland or St. Louis or Pittsburgh? You guys get the idea of what I'm doing here. You guys get it. Look, even the cops in New York City are tired of going after the same homeless people, and they're encouraged to buy them a one-way bus ticket out of town. This is, a, this is a viable solution that they encourage cops to do, right? Displace the displaced because making the problem exponentially works has always benefited America, right? I guess this is, this is really not what people meant when they said fight fire with fire. I mean, New York City is literally saying, forget about it, to the homeless. 
And that is the best New York City accent I can do. Uh, so don't. <laughs> not an accents guy. <laughs> but New York City has also deregulated rents, right? But those that already live in the apartments are grandfathered in and don't have to worry about rising rents. But don't worry. There, there's a way that we can fuck these people right in the face. Rent control is supposed to provide affordable housing, but only for people who are actually in the building to begin with. If somebody moves out, you can charge the next guy whatever you want. So there's landlords in New York City that are incentivized to have you move out, maybe by not fixing stuff or not killing the rats or the roaches. And then when you move, the next guy comes in and he has to pay more than you paid. And so these landlords can charge whatever the heck they want. So they wait for somebody to come along that'll pay a lot of money. And so all these units are left vacant for a long time. And look, I mean, New York City is really the greatest city in the world for exploitative capitalists. Or if you want to become an exploitative capitalist. I mean, if you, if you want to become a sociopath with no feelings, there is a really fun island you can go to and practice not having feelings. You know? But hey, uh, you do get to see Lion King on Broadway sometimes, right? That's fun. Huh? That's exciting. Huh? New York, New York. It's a hell of a town. It's hell. It is literally hell on earth is basically what New York City is. It is and it's not even like one of the deeper circles of hell. It's like it's not it's not even it's like an outskirts of the first circle of hell. Look, housing is the primary issue that leads to homelessness. And in this case, the problem is the solution. Various states and even nations have been putting forth the Housing First program, which simply gets homes for the homeless. That's it. That's the whole program. That's how simple it is to fix this problem. In America, there are two different types of Housing First options. The permanent support housing is for uh, people that are chronically or permanently homeless. And this way, uh, they can have a home and they can focus on getting cleaned up, getting mental health services, and learn how to get a job. The second is called rehousing. And this is for those that need a little bit of time to get back on their feet. And look, for those that are going to sit there and say, well, this is a handout, let's think of it a little bit differently. Housing first is the boots that these people need to pull themselves up by. You can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps if you don't have any fucking boots to begin with. Okay, most likely because the cops took your boots away uh, when they arrested you for peeing on a bank. Which I think, uh, legally, we should all be allowed to do once a day. We should all be peeing on banks. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm at. If I was running for office, that would be like my one big thing. I would be like, everybody gets to piss on a bank, and I, I feel like I would win. Uh, anyway... <laughs> Housing First gives homeless people a leg to stand on rather than kneecapping them from the start. In Salt Lake City, in the first year, they decreased homelessness by 90%. In other cities that they've tried this program, it's a minimum of at least 75%. And it turns out when you offer people some compassion and housing, they can focus on bettering themselves and get their lives on track. But when you put profit first, it's most likely to limit their opportunities and wreck lives. But homeless folks in the housing program have a higher likelihood of getting a job and keeping it. Their mental health improves through regular therapy and, if needed, medications. Plus, their physical health improves because they're getting regular meals and showers. And look, I know. I know, right? Everybody's asking the really big question that they ask every time some kind of solution like this comes up. Well, where, well, where the money gonna come from, Chris? Where, where the, where the money gonna come from? A, a program like this significantly decreases homelessness and humanizes people for the first time in a long time. I mean, can we really put a price on that? I ask you, can we really put a price? on humanity. Some people have, and it's $20 billion. That's how much it's gonna cost. Now, before 
People start rolling their eyes at this unthinkable rumor. Remember, Wall Street got a $6 trillion handout, and our current war budget is over $700 billion. A fraction of these amounts can get people off the streets. The rest can get everybody universal basic income, Medicare for all, and a pony for every American. Okay. So when your child asks you why they can't have a pony, you let them know. It's because of the military industrial complex and the fucking bankers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Start that kid off on the radical path right. But some cities are doing something a little bit different to budget for the Housing First programs. Uh, before capitalism and climate change made Austin less weird and more inhospitable, they implemented a Housing First program whose budget came from defunding the police. Austin was housing the chronically homeless in empty hotels, right? This would cost about $12 million to make happen. $6 million of that would come from police budgets. Following that, $6.5 million would be set aside annually to help Austin's uh, Housing First initiative, which for just one hotel would cost about $1.6 million per year to run. On top of all of that, Austin's police budget was slashed another $20 million, getting rid of cadet classes, license plate readers, uh, and the standard issue aviator sunglasses. Yeah, so now they have to get the discount gas station sunglasses, but it's all right because it gives off the same level of douchiness. So <laughs> all is still right in the world. They have, they have to wear Oakleys instead of Oakleys, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're the knockoffs. <laughs> you know, that's what they're getting now. Uh, on top of all this, there's an additional $80 million that was cut from civilian services, which are now going to be allocated to a different department. And I know, I know, this sounds like a lot, right? But remember, even after their budgets were slashed over $100 million, they still have a fuck ton of money to employ cops, right? And I know, I know, right? The reaction in the news to this sort of stuff is going to be, there's, it's just people going to be, oh man, here we go, okay? Here we go. Crime is going to skyrocket in Austin, people. Just you watch, okay? People are just going to commit crimes. They're going to commit murders all over the place, and they're going to start jacking off in the streets. That's what's going to happen. It's like, relax, buddy, okay? Let's all take a breath, all right? Austin isn't going to get that weird, not Congress. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the Housing First programs decrease the cost of emergency services. It saves cities approximately $31,000 per person per year. Multiply that by hundreds and thousands of people that wind up being homeless that are now being taken care of. This program is actually saving cities money. This means that Overfunding police departments, as Joe Biden and a majority of Democrats and all of the Republicans want to do, would be doubly unnecessary and really an insult to basic math. The Housing First program has also found successes in various countries from Canada to the Czech Republic. Right In the Czech Republic, this program is primarily used to help the Roma or Gypsy population re-enter the housing markets. When this program started, they were thinking the success rate would be like 80%. But since 2017, 100% of the families are still housed within the program. Not just that, but in this program, kids are given a stable environment to get a good education. The family's physical and psychological health improved and the expenditures decrease, giving their lives some all around stability. In Canada, places like Saskatoon, can reach temperatures of minus 30 degrees. Now, harm reduction centers are designated warm spaces, uh, and because of the pandemic, they've had to cut down on their beds. So right now, they're calling for 24-7 warming spaces for the homeless. And the Housing First programs would actually fit that model. I have to say, though, I, I do find it genuinely incredible that Canadians just don't hibernate in the winter, right? Like, it falls below 50 degrees, and I just never want to leave the house, right? But I do suppose that in order to hibernate, you would 
like need a home. So it makes an even bigger argument for housing first in Canada. In Edmonton, Canada, this program has helped over 12,000 people since 2009 and currently houses about 1,100 people. Uh, they budgeted that 30 clients can be taken care of with about $800,000. And that's Canadian dollars, so it doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> actually, in Canada, they also take booze to their clients. right? Before everybody just hops and puffs, remember that homeless people are people too, and they have the right to alcohol just like the rest of us. Okay, But there is unending proof that housing first works and improves the conditions of these humans and decreases homelessness. Isn't it strange, though, that we need proof that compassion is an effective and financially sound method of addressing some of the most deepest and troubling issues that capitalism has created, further proving that capitalism is a system that creates more inequalities and thrives on it? Look, compassion, logic, and empathy should be our default setting. But when you have a dominant economic system that rewards cruelty, it's kind of easy to see why compassion needs to be proven as an effective solution. Housing First also puts the choice in the client's hands. That means if they don't want to, they don't have to. But there are some people who have looked at the Housing First programs and see it as unfair. Right? Why should these people get a free? Why should these people get free housing when the rest of us have to work hard and and get our own homes and apartments? And look, I get it. Right, arguments like that have been made towards ending student debt too. The right to shelter is a basic need that should be recognized by any basic government. And yes, I'm all for housing first and canceling student debt. As someone who does work really hard for what they have and paid off those, all their student loans by being broke a lot, I'm 100% fine with the homeless, a homeless person picking their home and giving a leg up to get their lives on, back on track and canceling all of the student debt. 100% for it. And look, if this is somebody that already has a job and is now homeless and now goes into the Housing First program and doesn't have to worry about rent, even better. Maybe that'll get us to start realizing that the notion of rents and mortgages don't seem to make any sense in an unequal system that prioritizes profit over humanity. I mean, for fuck's sake, model UNs have come up with better ways of dealing with homelessness than the United States. I mean, we can't build a house for everybody in America because then nobody would want to work, right? Wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wrong. You are wrong. <laughs> that is absolutely wrong. Look, work shouldn't be about earning money as a way to not lose your homes. And look, most workers do wind up losing their homes or their cars because of corporate deregulation and a society that's obsessed with fetishizing billionaires. It's almost like some folks can't get aroused without seeing a do dozen zeros in your bank account. And that's before the decimal point. Okay, I got... And infinite amount of zeros after the decimal point. But giving people a home to have less to worry about would mean that our society would be able to spend time, energy, and money coming up with innovative solutions to fix some of our most troubling problems. Right now, there could be a brilliant climate scientist homeless on a bus to New Jersey. Guys, for fuck's sake, do we really want one of the most potentially brilliant people to be stuck in New Jersey? AKA Yankee, Florida, is that what we want? I say nay. <laughs> Look, solutions to homelessness are right at our fingertips and they don't come from making these people illegal or invisible. It comes from showing them compassion and acting out of logic. And once we do that, the profit will automatically follow if you care about that sort of thing. But first thing we need to do is give these people their humanity back by letting them have a home, a sandwich, and a beer on us. The end. Thank you guys so much for, for hanging out. 
And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm. And if you're trying to subvert censorship, the best place to do that is Rockfin. Uh, Rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn and income from what they create. And there's absolutely no censorship on that platform. So if you want to follow me on Rockfin, you can follow me at rockfin.com slash Mohan. Ha ha. And if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you would, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making a either a one-time donation, which acts as, uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows, uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and and leave comments for me as, um, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.